Soname dare no me, or whose eyes are those eyes, is a phrase that would haunt the young boy for the rest of his life. Takami Nishijo's you're not so average teenager who is a shudden with an interesting personality. He'd spend most of his time playing ESO online, in which he'd act like a troll because of course he does. Takami also enjoyed re-watching the fictional Bloodtoon anime, in which he had a pretty unhealthy obsession with the fictional character he would name, Seiratan. But none of this is what makes him interesting. You see, throughout the gameplay you'll experience what's known as delusion triggers. It'll be either red for negative or green for positive. Depending on which one the player chooses, Takumi would then go through a delusion in his mind, which could range from his death to some very unimaginable things with his sibling. We're talking about Chaos Head Noah again. Why are you even surprised? If you've done any sort of research on this game, you'd know that there's two different versions, Chaos Head and Chaos Head Noah. Noah includes basically a lot more. It's the definitive way to play the game. Introducing side routes, new CGs, sprites, and dialogue, Noah is an improvement in almost every way. It's not like we can talk about the original anyway because it's not even localized. The original would release in April 25th, 2008, whereas Noah would release in February 26th, 2009, marking today as a few days after the 15th anniversary of Chaos Head Noah and the Science Adventure series as a whole. Noah would finally get an English localization in 2020. This was an absolute disaster. Please check the eye icon or the description for a link to my old video on this situation. Moving on, the game is now playable in the best state possible due to the Committee of Zero and their fan patch which fixes most of its issues. I'll also be leaving a link to this in the description. Where Noah excels in my opinion is in its horror aspects and its characters. Utilizing the visual novel formula to its fullest, the game is able to give the player an overwhelming sense of dread. To prove this, allow me to give a quick rundown on the plot throughout Chapter 1. Through the eyes of Takami Nishijo, we witness him typing to his friend Grimm in an online chat room in ESO. Shogun introduces himself into the chat room by saying absolutely nothing as Grimm rambles on about the new gen murders, an ongoing phenomenon happening in the Shibuya district of Tokyo, just where Takami happens to live. Grimm leaves shortly after and then Shogun properly introduces himself and sends Takami just a few links. Takami, of course, clicks on one of the links and is met with horrific images of what looks like to be a murder taking place. He clicks off as soon as he can. Shortly after, we then get to see a little bit of Takami's very infrequent school life, where we get to meet the Giga Chad Daisuke Misumi himself. This guy is such a pacebreaker for the series that it's really hard to not find him hilarious. Takami's day goes by like any other, but as he's walking home, he starts to hear something. Something very faint. But as he approaches the noise, the sound becomes more obvious. It's a metal on metal, clang sound. Takumi wanders into the alleyway and sees an image just like what Shogun had sent him. There was a girl nailing stakes into a man, and the worst part of all is that she noticed him. Right after this, I could immediately tell I was hooked on this game. You know that feeling you get when something just clicks? I got that here. Immediately, only within the first hour of the game, I had that feeling of dread. And not only that, but every time afterwards when we were in Takami's room, I always had the feeling that someone was watching me. Sonome, dare no me. When I think about visual novels that are talked about most in the horror genre, I think about Chaos at Noah and Doki Doki Literature Club. The way these games both use horror elements is vastly different. Doki Doki uses its horror elements with its main intention to scare the player. But then you see Chaos Head using its horror elements to scare the main character, which allows the buildup of uneasiness to slowly creep into the story, thus making the player way more immersed. In the beginning, you'll notice characters like Nanami and Misumi. These characters feel like they're there just to relax you before some hyper scary serious moment happens. But then you have characters like ISA and Sena, who if anything just stress you out more because you'll initially have no idea what the hell they're saying. <laughs> Now I've left out music until now, but honestly it's the best part about this game. The way they use music is so interesting. Music in Chaos Head is not used for most of the game, and I honestly wish more visual novels were like this. 99% of the time when Takumi is at home, all you hear is the idling of his computer, his fans, and his clicking and tapping. That's it. And it adds so much more to the immersion and atmosphere that you could ever imagine. Music in Chaos Head is only really used to set a tone, such as when Takumi is just hanging out with Nanami, or when he's in a very, very dire situation. And because of how rare it was to hear most of the music, I have really got attached to the soundtrack. The way the music is used to intertwine with the story is honestly perfect. Chaos Head is a story about someone with extreme social anxiety, fighting the urge to collapse, and getting better. 
and the music reflects this. Moving on from music though, the small thing that people tend to say very constantly about Chaos Head is that they don't like Takumi as a protagonist. And you know what, I definitely agree during the beginning of the story. I think Takumi is the perfect protagonist for Chaos Head, but at the same time I don't think he's the most likable guy. I mean, you just look at him, he's pathetic, he's miserable. Bro's the definition of save me white girl. Enough making fun of this loser. From here I won't be talking about the story anymore, but I'll leave a little hint to the newcomers. Is the scenery your eyes perceive truly real? Now this game would not only go on to influence the next title in the series, Steins Gate, but also the Science Adventure series as a whole. The next five parts of the story all have something to do with Chaos Ed. It's true that the impact of this story influenced visual novels as a whole. If you are somehow anime only and you ended up on this video, I am so sorry. You not only experienced the worst version of the story, you also didn't get to see key moments that I consider to be some of the greatest horror moments in visual novels, period. Speaking of impact, I made a post on Twitter asking the community what their favorite aspect of Chaos Head is. I'm very glad about how serious people took Shogun Shogun ISA Rimi. Shit, I was actually getting wet now. If Misumi-kun wanted to fuck me in the ass right then, I probably wouldn't have been able to say no. Shogun, for all the joke responses I got, it's nice to see all the serious stuff as well. Such as, Sena feet scene, Fez feet, and Takumi feet. Come on, tap. Heads up if you relate to Takumi, uh... It's probably not a good thing. In all seriousness though, I feel like every time Bassman replies to one of these, you kind of always have to agree with him. I'll also show some of the more non spoily answers I got too. Again, it's great to see everybody in this community just agree that this game is truly something great. But yeah, obviously the best thing to come from Chaos Head is, you know, Chaos Child and Steins Gate, you know, other games. So for a game that came out 15 years ago, you'd assume it would be a little rough, right? Maybe it has some interesting dialogue, weird CGs and art, and maybe like a weird route or two. You know, that one's correct, but for the most part, Chaos Head Noah really stood the test of time. It's an incredible visual novel, and I highly recommend it to anybody who's into this medium. This deep dive into horror with an amazingly written cast of characters and a perfect protagonist for this experience really leaves you with a game that you're never going to forget. Now I'll say, it's a very ballsy move to make Takumi your protagonist, but to have been able to redeem him just shows that the writing was solid. Visual novels are often the most mocked genre of media, but Noah utilizes this formula in a way that makes it virtually unadaptable. Hard to say about most games, but it's worth your damn time. Thank you all for watching. Of course, like and subscribe. This is my fifth and final time talking about Chaos Head. I'll be back when Convergence strikes, causing me to create another video. Goodbye, y'all. I think the funniest part about this whole thing is that while Takumi is suffering, getting dragged on into all these weird situations, you have just these detectives ro running around, just like so nonchalantly, just trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Someone please make a Giga Chad compilation of Ban Man, please.